Welcome to the July 12th uh, meeting of the Historic Zoning Commission. I'd like to call the meeting to order. First order of business is to entertain a motion to approve the June 14th, 2021 minutes. Is there such a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Scalf. Is there a second? I'll second with comments. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. Um, are there any questions or comments? It says Mr. Vogren stated at which it was stated on in the where under Chair Roberts on the third sentence, and I guess it meant to say stated at which time, but but that just needs fixed to make sense. And then on page four, um, at the uh, in the the big second paragraph, it says to the 150, and I think that probably means feet. Yep. Yep. And then in the first paragraph, uh, the third line, it says, it just needs to make sense. It says 70 feet homes, whatever. I, I'm not sure what that meant. And then on page five, it said, Mr. Mann stated that supports not recommending this. I think it could just be a little clear that, um, that um, these reasons uh, make, you know, make me not support recommending this or something. Okay, yeah, whatever. And then there were a couple more. It's just maybe read them <laughs> over. And it's, I think okay. they're. Are we talking grammatical errors? There they're, they're, no, they're kind of making it nonsensical. It's more words left out. So I would recommend. Uh, I'll vote for them, but. Okay, well, let's, uh, are there any more comments on this then? Otherwise, let's uh, vote on these as uh, Mary, as amended by Mary. So all in favor of the uh, motion to approve as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Amanda, have you got those various pieces? I do, I do too. <clears throat> Okay, Amanda, announcements. Thank you all. The um, site visit for Harlandsdale that we had planned for June had to be canceled due to inclement weather. So I just wanted to, to let you know that's still something that we're hoping to reschedule. So I'll be in touch via email um, to ask about potential times in August. Um, and if uh, that doesn't work for you, we can probably push to September, but it's something that we do hope to to meet with you about sooner rather than later. Is your mic on? It is. I'll talk louder. Okay. <laughs> so we also have our regular July 19th design review committee meeting at four o'clock uh, a week from today. You'll be in this room. Um, we have seven items tentatively on that schedule. And I'll be sending the agenda to you no later than Wednesday morning. <clears throat> and then um, our August 19th meeting, looking ahead for des um, design review committee, that is a regular scheduled meeting. I just wanted to let you know that I'll provide a brief overview of the major changes that staff will be proposing to the commission to consider for the historic district design guidelines update. So that'll be uh, about a 10 minute PowerPoint presentation touching on the, the big picture items there. So we're really excited about giving that to you. It's been something we've been working on um, in house for a while and um, I'm hoping that you're all very happy with it. Thank you. All right, we'll move on. Are there any non-agenda items to be placed on the agenda? These are reserved for emergency instances and any non-agenda items should be considered only upon the unanimous approval of all historic zoning members. Hearing none, we'll move on. Are there any citizen comments on items not on the agenda? These are for Franklin citizens to be heard on items not included on the agenda. 
the historic zoning uh, shall make no decisions or consideration of action on citizen comments except to refer the matter to the planning director for administrative consideration or to schedule the matter for historic zoning consideration at a later date. Are there any citizens' comments? All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to item number one, consideration of alterations windows at 130 First Avenue South. Randall Williams, applicant. Welcome. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, Mr. Chair, would you mind, for the, the good of everyone in the room, kind of going over how we present each item? Thank you. we Will do. First, um, when we run through these uh, items, we'll, the first thing will be a staff analysis, which Ms. Rode will, Rose will present, and along with her recommendation, the applicant will comment. Then there will be a chance for citizens to comment on the uh, application, and then the commission will deliberate and ask the applicant questions if needed. And then the, the commission will take a vote. So back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness for alterations to a second floor window pattern at 130 First Avenue South. This is one of the brownstones that faces First Avenue. So this um, on the screen here, the cursor is on the side facing First Avenue. This side faces an internal drive. There is a gate here for some reference for everyone. The proposed work includes the removal of two windows. They are identified on the screen here. Um, and the intent is to remove those and to um, make them appear full size um, by removing the, the faux shutters underneath those um, and adding in place um, two actual full size windows. Right now they're half size windows with a, a set of faux shutters underneath to give the appearance of being filled in over time. And the, uh, the new property owner would like those to be full size windows. So the guidelines would recommend that one preserve historic windows and window openings. Uh, this building was constructed in the 2000s and is therefore not a historic structure. So in the case of proposed alterations to non-historic buildings, the alterations are reviewed namely in how the impacts, how the alterations would impact the historic district and the building itself. Um, while the window specifications themselves have not been specified, uh, the removal of these shutters and the half windows and the replacement with full-size windows is entirely appropriate and in keeping with the fenestration pattern found elsewhere on this facade. Uh, so overall, the proposal would not impact the character of the district or surrounding structures in any negative way. So with that, it is recommended that the commission approve the proposed window alterations with the conditions that the new windows match the existing windows with historic profile and dimension, and that they either consist of wood or a composite material with the appearance of wood, that those window specifications be submitted to staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a building permit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Williams. I hope this is the most complicated uh, <laughs> item on the agenda. Um, <laughs> essentially, uh, the brick is framed in for a full-size window. On the interior, there were some built-in cabinets, and so they just did a half window to, um, to make maximum use of the interior size. We took those uh, built-ins out, and we just want to go back in with the original, with the same size mm -hmm. windows as you see on, on the rest. Uh, so that underneath those fake shutters is just house wrap and plywood. I would be removing that, and uh, Sinwood in Nashville carries this same window, and so it would just be a matter of uh, putting full-size windows in those those two spaces. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any citizens that wish to comment on the application? All right. Then we need a motion commission to start discussion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. I move to approve with conditions a certificate of appropriateness for the proposed window alterations. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Nick. Discussion? Any questions? Ken? Uh, the, I'm just curious, the windows above on either side of the chimney have shutters on them. Will you will you be putting the full high shutters? I'll be matching everything that you see on the other windows will be matched to have the same appearance. Anything else? May I ask a question? 
may I ask a question? Sure. I was the, under the assumption that the, the shutters would not be added because it doesn't appear that there would be room to add full-size operable shutters to this location. Um, I'll, I'll look and see, but I do think we have this space, but you're right on the, on, on the interior, on the chimney side, mm -hmm. it looks like we might not be able to, uh, to put that, uh, but I can double check my measurements and see. Okay. Okay. I know we have it on the other sides. So we have the space. But if it's your recommendation that we, we try to add the shutters, I'll, I'll do what I can to do that. I, I have no, the, the, I have right, no comment is on the, that. Is the intent to put the shutters up? The intent is to put the shutters okay. up. And if I don't have the space, I, I might have you to. You won't be able to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Ready to vote? All in favor then, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're ready for item two. Consideration of addition at 212 Lewisburg Avenue. Don Burke, applicant. Okay, Amanda. Thank you. Applicants requesting a certificate of appropriateness for the construction of a rear addition and the modification of an existing rear dormer at this property. Uh, the applicant and or the property owners appeared before the DRC to discuss the proposal um, several meetings and also hosted a site visit on April 19th, which I believe was very helpful. Uh, the commission approved partial demolition of this principal structure through the removal of a first floor enclosed rear porch um, at its June meeting. Um, and then the remainder of the application was deferred to this meeting to allow for additional discussion at a DRC meeting. <coughs> so a quick overview, this is the property. Um, it is located at 212 Lewisburg Avenue. Um, this is the front facade, this is the front and right corner, and this is the left side of the structure. <coughs> zoom out a little bit so you can see both. So the proposed addition is situated at the rear of the residence and to get everyone's bearings, this is the front of the house, so the rear is back here. Uh, while most of the additions recess behind the house, there is a small portion that you can see on this section here that extends outward um, about four and a half feet toward the right facade. Uh, much of the main level additions designed to read as a glassed in porch area. So you can see that really well on the north side or right elevation. The incorporated insets, offsets, and material changes differentiate the form from that of the existing structure. And the upper level is inset several feet from the existing side facade walls. I know it's a little harder to tell on here, but this is inset several feet in to read more as a dormer. Um, initial discussions with staff and the design review committee indicated concern about the proposal's overall massing. So the applicant has revised this proposal to incorporate recommendations of the DRC by lessening the overall square footage of the upper level and by recessing the mass of the upper level away from that corner of the house several feet back. And um, that does allow the original residents to remain more fully exposed at side bandages and allows the upper level to read more as an extruded dormer as opposed to reading as a full upper level addition. The proposed chimney added here um, was previously designed to consist of two flues, producing a form that was not entirely consistent with that seen on historic equivalents. So the guidelines do state that additions should be designed to be clearly contemporary, um, but compatible with proportions, forms, materials, and details of the building. And there is an existing chimney on this facade for the house. So the applicant responded to staff and the commission feedback by altering the proposed chimney's uh, mass to one flue, so it is much more streamlined. As far as the addition size, the footprint measures approximately 1,333 feet, which is about 67% of the historic portion of the home. 
The addition size is not consistent with the guidelines as such because the guidelines do recommend that additions read no more than half of the footprint of the historic portion of the home. The uh, building coverage, however, is at 17%, which is consistent with the guidelines. The applicant did provide a, a sheet here to give you more information on that. The subject property is located here, um, and with the addition kind of grayed in. Uh, the coverage of roof area to the size of the lot is 17%, and the applicant is showing information about the adjacent properties um, in relation to that, which do have coverage that, that does exceed that. Um, by a large degree. As for the materials of the addition, the applicant is proposing to use uh, cedar framing, cementitious siding with a four inch exposed exposure mitered co um, corners, um, painted wood, clad architectural windows, painted uh, wood rafter tails, half round gutters, standing seam metal on the lower um, exposures and asphalt shingle roofing otherwise a terracotta flue, um, all which are consistent with the guidelines. Now the proposed foundation material for the addition is either a board formed concrete um, to create a kind of a rustic look. I'm gonna go ahead and, and skip to that image here. So board formed concrete is exactly that. It's concrete that is molded in uh, a mold that's created by wood. So it kind of gives this uh, wood appearance once it's fine, um, once it's dried into um, concrete from cement. Um, the applicant would like to use this um, to create that appearance for the, for the log cabin. Um, otherwise, a cultural architectural stone veneer or even a parch coated C CMU, which is like a stucco uh, thin coating on a CMU block, which you see here, which is very common in the historic districts for additions. Um, board farm concrete is not typically used in the historic districts. Uh, the stone veneer may be appropriate if the stone is chosen to match the existing <coughs> profile, texture, and color, um, which may be hard to do. It just depends on what you can find out there <laughs> as you're doing that. And then um, the existing chimney is also stone, which complicates things a, to a, a bit of a degree for the applicant in finding that too. Uh, the CMU, of course, is common and, and would, could be appropriate. Now, the new chimney is proposed to be filled stone. The applicant showing the existing chimney here, and they would like to use filled stone. But if it's not available, they'd like to use a similar cultured stone. Um, knowing that color match is really important, they would use a real stone as the third option there. Uh, the applicant's intent is to use uh, a mortared stone. So there is a spec sheet in here somewhere, right here. <laughs> um, that kind of shows you how it would be laid, but this is for uh, dry stacks. So please keep in mind that the applicant's not planning to build a dry stack chimney as much as to give you kind of a sense of how it would look. Um, it would be mortared in. Per guidelines, a sample of the stone veneer would be required for both the chimney and the foundation um, to determine how well those materials emulate the historic materials on the building and um, window specifications would need to be provided as well. So all that said, it is recommended that the commission approve with conditions. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. The design of the addition with the exception of the size meets the intent of the guidelines. So it is recommended that the commission deny the addition because the footprint measures 67% of the historic structure, which exceeds the guidelines recommendations by 17%. Um, if issued a COA, the new windows would need to be submitted for review and approval in light of the guidelines. Um, a cultured stone is more appropriate to the districts than a board born concrete. Um, but because of the location of the addition and the visibility, um, either proposed material could be appropriate. Um, the foundation's pretty limited in visibility from the street view. A parched coated CMU could be appropriate as well. If the commission approves the use of stone on the foundation, however, a sample would need to be provided to staff um, prior to issuance of a building permit. 
Otherwise, the application would need to meet all the other requirements of the building and neighborhood services prior to issuance of a permit as well. Thank you. Mr. Burke, good afternoon. Hi. Um, well, I guess uh, the real discussion here is about that 67%. So um, you know, in our last DRC meeting, I did uh, put together a site plan that, um, that did analyze the properties uh, surrounding this property and the size of the lot um, and, and their lots. And uh, what I did find was that uh, those properties were between 20 and 30 percent, using about 20 and 30 percent of their, of their um, area for roof. And our, our addition all totaled would be only 16 percent. Let me kind of offer that to mitigate the difference in a 16 or 17 percent overage uh, from the original square footage of the house, just because um, you know this is a fairly large lot by com comparison to a lot of ones that um, that you see downtown, and it has a pretty small building on it for the size of the lot. The, the neighboring buildings all around it are two-story volumes as well, so not only are they increasing their square footage uh, of roof area, they're also doing it on a two-story level where we've tried to telescope back from that and let only a portion of the rear port backyard be, you know, um, taking up square footage, but it's only on a, on a one-story level as opposed to two. So what we're trying to do is, you know, minimize the effect on the lot, you know, it's surrounded by other houses, um, but still utilize some of the square footage that's on that lot uh, that is more than a lot of other properties have to work with. So what we're hoping is that the balance of being only at 16% of the floor area ratio for the lot is acceptable to excuse, you know, going 16% over in the, um, the footprint of the, of the existing building. Okay. Are there any citizens who wish to comment on this application? Hearing none, Commission, we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chair, yes. I move to approve issuance of a COA for the addition proposal based on the staff analysis and recommendation dated July the 12th, 2021. Okay, but since you're going against the staff recommendation, if you'd give us a reason. I have two reasons that inform that decision. And the first is the large lot size, which as Mr. Burke indicates, covers the, the footprints only 16% of that lot size. And the second is the minimal visibility of the addition. Thank you. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, discussion. Um, I, I believe, and maybe I'm remembering wrong, and it doesn't matter that much, but I think the houses on either side are either a story, a story and a half on one side and a one story on the other. Um, Bill Powell's. Bill's is a story and a half? It is. Is a Victorian. It's yeah, quite it's a bit tall. very tall ceilings, yeah. and I know it's as tall as a story and a half, but I thought you said both of them were two story. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, in my analysis of them, they, they, by comparison to the overall ridge height of this okay. house, they, they appear to be a okay. volume that is. Feels and like then a uh, the oh. other question I wanted to ask on the north side, where um, you see all the windows and the French doors, mm -hmm. is there any way to? Um, reasonably do some kind of a break so the porch reads as another piece like it does on the south side? Um, I, I believe there is a break there. At the there fireplace. is a break, yes. okay. Yeah, there's a volume break where the, the fireplace yeah, it just goes, pushes out a little further. It just goes down a little bit, but if you look on the south side, I think it reads more as a break. Um, well, the south side would be the... There uh, is a break. Okay, I got it. it. That little line before the chimney is a break. Right. Yes. Got it. Thank you. That was my only question. Anything else? Any other questions? Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Uh, I will not be able to support the motion. Uh, not only is the 16% uh, the overage a concern to me, but the addition appears to envelop the house and... We like to see a separation, and, and that's just not there. Thank you. May I comment on that? 
Is sure. it possible? Comment. I, I just for for um, just so you know, Susan, it's it's fairly it's a very translucent addition. It does envelop it. I agree on that side. Uh, we've actually left the rear of the existing house intact inside um, with this translucent addition, so that you can actually read it. But but uh, your point is taken. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Any Chair. other comments? Mr. Chair. Nick. Uh, I, I also don't think I can support this only because of the overage. Uh, that was my concern at the at the last meeting, and um, I, I'm just having trouble justifying a deviation from policy that that significant. So it, it's solely for that reason that I'm not going to be able to support this. Any other comments? Well, let me just. Do we have just, a second? Go, go ahead. Did we have a second? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Lisa, mm -hmm. Lisa seconded it. We've, we've talked about this property now five times um, on this thing. The, if you look at the drawings, the page, the cover page of this set of drawings, the adjoining houses to this site, the footprints range from 3,900 square feet to 5,300 uh, square feet. This house that we're talking about is 67 feet back from the proper front property line to the front of the house. It's a 16% lot size ratio. It's a small house with a big front yard setback. It's limited at best the vis visibility from Lewisburg. And the difference in 50% and 67% is 189 square feet. So I think we're I think there's reason, good reason, to approve this. And they're trying to, um, this is a small house to start out with. And that's, the, that's what they're trying to do, is to make some sensible uh, addition for it. So I'm in full support of um, Mr. Laster's motion to approve. So are there any other comments? Uh, only that uh, besides it being a small house, it's a, it's a very unusual house. And so the approach has to be unique and creative, which I think this approach is, and requires some leeway um, regarding the, the size. So that would be and I, I think we, with our site visit there, we saw some of the, some of the rationale with, with, with some of this. So it's, it, is a unique, it is a unique site. So if there are no other comments then, let's, uh, I think we're ready to vote, so let's do this by raise your hand. So all in favor of the motion to approve, please raise your hand. And those opposed? So there are two against. You got that, Amanda? Yes. All right. We're good. Thank you, Don. All right. Thank you. Thanks to the owner, too. All right. We're ready for... Item three, consideration of new construction at 119 Splendor Ridge. Mike Four Builders. It must be Chad Gore. It is. Okay, Amanda. Hey, the applicant's requesting a COA for the construction of a two-story principal structure with garage at 119 uh, Splendor Ridge Drive. You can see on the screen here that this is located uh, closer to the back of the property in the highlighted location. The applicant did appear before the DRC to discuss its proposal at its June DRC meeting. The <clears throat> proposal is for a two and a half story structure. You can see the rendering here on the screen, lot four. It has a cross gable um, with a full three bay porch and a centered pediment. The entrance features some side lights on the door, uh, a bay projection is centered on the second floor facade here. And then a two bay garage is proposed at the rear of the driveway, recessed about 36 feet from the front facade. And a two level porch is proposed at the rear. Here's a zoomed in version of the rendering. <clears throat> And here's the site plan. So the guidelines <coughs> recommend that one, reinforce the setbacks of adjacent properties. This is a newly plotted development, and so it is um, 
The setbacks have been defined as 15 feet in the front, five on the sides, and 15 in the rear. The applicant provided this con conceptual street view to kind of give you a sense of how the grading is changing over the course of the street. This is at the lower end toward the back of the property, so the, um, the fall is, is less intense than it is on some of the other properties that have been reviewed. Uh, the finished floor elevation <coughs> to the curb is about a four foot, four inch difference, and so it, it is very nominal, and the applicant is proposing to use some, the wrong direction some concrete risers with some landscaping to help soften that, that transition there. The scale at two and a half stories is consistent with the uh, preliminary certificate of appropriateness that was uh, issued for this development in 2018. The guidelines do recommend that garages be detached where they are detached historically um, or otherwise attached so that they appear to be at traditional locations behind the rear form of the house or not otherwise visible from the street. I believe the applicant has achieved that well with this. Um, as you can see in the rendering, it will appear to be at the rear and appear to be um, detached, though it is attached in the, in the back here. This configuration provides a traditional appearance and it presents um, appropriately um, in relation to the other forms that have been approved on the street. The height at 37 feet, four inches, is consistent with the development's uh, preliminary certificate of appropriateness. The materials of the proposed building, I'm gonna kinda go ahead to the elevations here, are proposed to be brick, uh, cementitious <laughs> lap siding of a five inch reveal, uh, smooth cementitious paneling, some wood and iron railings with porches, wood columns, brick chimney, um, a metal awning over a side door, and asphalt shingle throughout. All of these are consistent with the guidelines. The window specifications were not submitted, but I believe they're consistent with what has been approved um, for other homes in this development. The proportion and rhythm of, of the window openings are all consistent with the guidelines. The building coverage is at 39%, which is not consistent with the guidelines. The guidelines recommend no more than 35% building coverage um, in specified historic district residential areas, including this one. Now, the applicant did respond to some design review committee comments from the June meeting by lowering the basis on the front porch. So I'll zoom in slightly so you can see that. They were a little taller. This is a, sort of an eclectic style, um, and the applicant did lower those spaces to be more consistent with what you might see and um, I guess some revival styles. The um, applicant also changed the upper level facade material from a shingle to, to be a consistently uh, brick on the, the main mass here. With that, it is recommended that the commission deny the proposal. Um, the stylistically, the application does meet the intent of the guidelines with the exception of its size in relation to the lot size. Uh, the proposed building coverage is exceeding um, the guidelines recommendation by 4% um, and therefore cannot be supported by staff. If issued a COA, however, the window specifications will need to be submitted to staff prior to issuance of a building permit. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Gore, welcome. Good evening. Uh, Chad Gore, representing the applicant, Mike Ford Builders. Uh, I think Amanda's summary was plenty sufficient. Um, yeah, we've, we've talked about the lot coverage a number of times, but I'm happy to answer any, any other questions about that if I need to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it to you guys. Okay, are there any citizens that wish to comment on this application? Otherwise, we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. 
I move to approve a certificate of appropriateness for the proposed new construction of lot four based on staff analysis and recommended dated mm -hmm. July 12, 2021. <clears throat> Take exception with staff recommendation because this is consistent with what we have approved in this development. Thank you, Ken. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second with uh, just wanting it to say um, for the sake of uh, information how much of this uh, property is open space um, of the entire development yes sir uh, to I'm trying to figure out how to answer it exactly if we built out in prior discussions the calculations mm -hmm. I've done if we built out all of these lots to around 40 39 40 40 percent excuse me uh, there would be 13 percent total building coverage over the entire development okay that that's what I'm using to justify them being somewhat bigger and I would also ask is there a problem with the columns just coming down and sitting on a brick foundation and not being uh, raised up. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Well, I would recommend that as an you amendment. You want to make an amendment? Mm -hmm. I would make that as an amendment. Okay. I'm that state. the columns be simplified to sit on a course of brick and if and have the base otherwise the same. Columns full height. Mm hmm. All right, column simplified to sit on a brick base. Mm -hmm. All right, is there a second to Mary's amendment? I'll second. We are deleting, I, I call that the plinth. A We're couple deleting of, the plinth, is that right? You're deleting a couple of the brick courses and then otherwise leave it the same. Or it, I know you're trying to do it. To maybe you do get rid of the little... Yeah, maybe, yeah, the rendering probably shows it better. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the, yeah. We're going to let the columns come all the way down to the surface of the porch. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Okay, any discussion on the amendment? <clears throat> all right. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then. Then we're back to the uh, main motion as amended. Is there any more discussion on the main motion to approve um, as amended? If not, then uh, Nick. Yeah, sorry, sir. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to support this as I have with the other ones. I just wanted to to provide some rationale for because I voted, uh, you know, to say no to the last application when we're talking about building size. Uh, I know that the building size of 50 percent uh, and then the lot coverage is two different issues, but I'm here I'm going against staff recommendation. So I wanted to provide some reasoning. And in this particular situation, um, you know, I joined the planning commission in January of this year and this subdivision and pr uh, project was well underway, um, at least through the planning process. And I know that you've had discussions with this board um, and staff with making sure that the lot coverage for each individual home is, is under 40%. Um, and <clears throat> you've honored that. I didn't think it'd be fair to come in and, and ask you to change that. Um, so for that reason, uh, I, I'm okay with going against staff recommendations for this project. So I just wanted that for the record. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Ready to vote. And then let's do this by raise your hand. Raise your hand. Uh, all those for the motion as amended and opposed is best thank you thank you thank you see you next week Okay, we're ready for item four, consideration of partial demolition and addition, principal relocation of the accessory and new construction of the accessory of an accessory at 205 Lewisburg. Chris Strickland, applicant. Thank okay, you, Amanda. Mr. Chair. Okay. The applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness for a series of work. So I will um, break these down um, as concisely as I can. 
Um, one is for the partial removal of the house through um, the demolition of a shed addition. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show that to everybody. This is the structure. This is at the rear. The applicant's proposing to re remove this portion of the structure. And to go ahead to speak to that, the, uh, the proposed partial demolition consists of the removal of that rear shed addition. It's about 143 square feet. Uh, the guidelines recommend against the demolition of historic buildings and structures. Uh, the applicant included this, uh, these photographs here for um, documentation um, and estimates the addition was constructed around the 1980s. Um, it does have historic windows added to it, but um, I am in, in agreement um, that it, it does not appear to be a historic addition otherwise, though the exact construction date is unknown. Um, the uh, proposed demolition will not have an adverse impact on the district or the building itself. The uh, next proposal is for the construction of the rear addition. And I'm going to zoom back out. I know you have some big sheets there, so I'll try to give you as much information on the screen as I can. Okay, so here's the site plan. Uh, the guidelines do recommend that additions be designed to be clearly contemporary yet um, compatible with the proportions, forms, materials, and details of a building. It'd be limited to no more than half of the footprint of the original structure. Um, so the building has been identified and the applicant has based the size of the addition to be you know, right at 50% of the historic structure. Um, the addition is proposed to be at the rear elevation. As you can see here, this is the existing house and the uh, green is the proposed addition. The um, addition is inset about three and a half feet on the right side and about or right side here and about four feet one inch on this side to, to meet setback requirements um, for the construction of it. Um, the gabled addition features a small porch. I'm going to zoom back down here so you can see it's gabled on the on the on this back here. There is a small porch that kind of sheds off of it. It is incorporating so those insets um, using a porch form and it has a material change from brick to siding which are all compatible with the historic structure but serve to differentiate it from that historic structure's roof shape and from the overall form itself. Initial discussions with staff in the design review committee indicated a concern about the proposal's roof form. And so you see it has been revised uh, significantly to incorporate the recommendations of the DRC by removing a, a cross gabled element that was integrated about here um, and um, overall simplifying the, the porch form. So it, it reads very, very much compatible with the existing structure here. The size of the proposed addition is 924 square feet. So as I mentioned, it's roughly 50% uh, of the historic form, um, which is consistent with the guidelines. The materials are salvage brick for the chimney, a concrete porch located here, a um, CMU foundation, this parch coated cementitious siding. It's a four inch reveal. Uh, standing seam metal on the porch with asphalt on the remainder and painted wood for the um, details like the trim, the rafters, uh, the skirt board are all consistent with the guidelines. <coughs> the window specifications have not been submitted yet. Okay, moving on to the rest of the proposal, there is an existing outbuilding on the site. Let me go back to this page here. The existing outbuilding is, is quite lovely. We, when we entertained, um, the property owners entertained a site visit there a couple of months ago, and they would like to keep this. Now, the ordinance for the city does allow for what we call a minor accessory structure. A minor accessory structure must, must measure 200 square feet or less. And if they do, then you can have that in addition to um, 
what we call an accessory structure, which could be a shed, it could be a garage, a, a accessory dwelling unit. So the applicant is fortunate in that this measures less than 200 square feet, and what they would like to do is build a garage in its place. So they'd like to pick this up and relocate it toward the rear of the yard. Now, the property is pretty, pretty deep. It's much deeper than it is wide. So this is where the existing shed is, and they'd like to relocate it back here. Um, at the site visit, the uh, DRC was favorable to that. The existing structure is not historic. The guidelines would recommend maintaining historic outbuildings in their place unless it's the only way to save those. But because this structure is not historic, um, relocating it is appropriate. Uh, further, the accessory structure is situated on piers, so it can be relocated very easily. Um, it won't be as complicated as they have been in the past for other folks. So it is appropriate. They want to align it roughly with an outbuilding on the adjacent property so the location can be supported. Now moving on to the final um, proposal for this application is the construction of a new garage. So I'm going to skip to the site plan. The proposed accessory structure measures about 625 square feet for the footprint, and it's located in this yellow area. That's approximately where that shed is now. The guidelines do recommend that accessory structures be constructed in traditional locations, such as behind the principal structure, and visually be uh, subordinate in placement and size and mass and intricacy to that respective principal structure. Uh, the guidelines recommend that accessory structures be designed to be shorter than and designed to be consistent with the context of the principal structures they serve. So the applicant has worked very hard to achieve that here. Um, as you can see, the grade falls. They, they, they tried to keep it shorter than the house, and in fact, it is um, shorter than the house. Uh, it's approximately 17 feet as viewed from the front facade in height, um, which is uh, appropriate. The size at 625 square feet is also um, subordinate um, in, in size to, to that of the house, of course. The accessory structure is, oh, it's hard to find on this sheet. Just, <laughs> just a second. There's a lot on here. I want to make sure I pull that up for you. Okay. So here's the, the front of the accessory structure. I would call this a one story. There is a slight upper level, but I wouldn't call that a full half. It is um, a one bay garage, correct? correct? Okay. And then this is the left elevation. Excuse me. This is the rear elevation, excuse me. This is the rear and this is the front. And here is the side. Here's the other side. Nope. It's somewhere. Right here. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was zoomed in too far. But all the proposed materials would include a, a lap siding with a four inch reveal, just like the additions proposed to have, um, painted panels, a carriage style door underneath that front basin gable, um, wood detailing, asphalt shingle roof, a parch coated CMU foundation. They're all consistent with the guidelines and also consistent with the addition, which is consistent with the context of the house. Um, the cumulative lot coverage is important. Um, this lot is very large. So cumulatively, with the existing house, the addition, the minor accessory structure, and then the new garage proposed, the lot coverage amounts to 16.7%. So it is a nominal coverage on the lot. Um, the guidelines recommend no more than 35%. So that kind of illustrates how large and deep that lot is. Um, so with all that, I'm very happy to recommend approval with conditions, the conditions being that the addition must be photographed um, inside and out satisfactorily for commission records prior to it to 
being demolished from the house and that all the new window specifications for the addition and for the garage be submitted to staff for review and approval in light of the applicable guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Strickland. You got any comments that you'd like to make on the application? I think Amanda made them all. <laughs> okay, good. Are there any citizens that'd like to comment on this application? Hearing none, we're ready for a motion. Don't everybody speak at once. Mr. Chair, I move to approve with conditions COA for the proposal. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Susan. Discussion. I have, I have a couple of comments. Um, one is the awning mm -hmm. that's on the, the bird's eye view, perspective looking west, and you have it between the two windows. Can you explain your rationale behind that? It just seems like that it should go over that whole end, you know, the whole end of that elevation to me, but. I agree with you 100%. There, I, I'm sorry, I didn't let you. Uh, that's finish. okay, but that's, you know, it, it, that's, it, I, as a designer, there are things that sort of pop out and that just popped right out to me. Like, could that be different, you know, and that's what I wanted to. I'll explain why it's that way right okay. now. Okay. If Amanda, could you scroll back to the um, plan with the green square footages showing? Second page, I think, in the plan. And, and I, yes. I know, um, that yes, typically um, awnings are only placed over window openings. With that being on the rear elevation, that is one I noted, but I didn't comment on because it wasn't visible from the street. According to the guidelines, it says that you have to count that towards your coverage, towards your square footage of the count. If I'd count, if I'd pull that awning, technically, if I'd pull that awning all the way across, I would have been over the fifty percent. Ah. May ah. I comment? May I comment? Uh, yes. Please. Yes. Okay, I, I do not count awnings as part of roof coverage. I, I think that that's something that um, we'll clarify with the guidelines update, um, but um, no, that's not, that's not the intent. Good, great. It was, that's more, it for, that's more for porches and yes. more for enclosed spaces that's that good. add well, mass to a building. I'm glad we had that discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I am too. All right, I have one other comment. Okay. So on the, um, on the pier that you have on the, uh, the exit, mm -hmm. uh, and again, I'm looking at the bird's eye perspective looking west, is that column round or square? It's hard to tell. It is square to match the others. It looks okay. round the way it printed out. I agree. Okay, it sure it, it looks, okay. The proportion looks a little off, and it, 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 it's, it's tricking your eye a bit, but it is supposed to match the other columns, okay. the existing columns on the house. Okay, thank you. So that was it. That was do you want to make an amendment then I on will. the awning? I do. All I right. Will. <laughs> Please do. Uh, I would like to uh, amend, uh, make, uh, at, do an amendment that would have the applicant extend the awning on the, um, what elevation would that be? The rear. The rear elevation to, uh, to continue over the windows. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. I'll third it. Okay. <laughs> uh, that helps. And Brian, all right. Run. All right, to extend the awning on the rear elevation of the addition over the windows, to go completely over the windows. All right, is there any discussion on the amendment? All right, any, uh, are we ready to vote on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, other discussion, Nick? Yeah, thanks, uh, I think the design's beautiful. I think y'all did a really nice job. Thanks for having us out. My only question is, it looks like the, the proposed accessory, stru accessory structure is going to be sitting on top of the setback and then the the existing shed is being moved relocated to sit on top of the seven foot setback it's a it's a five foot setback with the accessory structures per mm. code oh, okay so the seven here reflected is mm. the seven is for the principal structure principal five structure for the got five it okay the, thank you I was, mm -hmm. not that i don't think that was a matter before this board but i just mm -hmm. want to make sure you're going to get a variance if you needed one got it. so thank you mm -hmm. with that i have no concerns good catch what any other questions? Ready to vote on the motion as amended. Um, all in favor of the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Done. Thank you. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you good Mr. luck. We look forward to the open house. Cocktails. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, are there any other items come up before this grand group? I, I'm not sure if I shared this. I think I might have, but it might have been with the, another commission. Uh, the city of Franklin was uh, approved for um, a grant application that was submitted by the planning department for an update to the Lewisburg Avenue National Register Historic District documentation. Now that is um, something that we've been notified of. We have not received a contract um, to execute any of that yet, but it's something that's really exciting. Um, we have incrementally been trying to update those um, documentation forms as we can. We've updated downtown, so as you know, um, which was a huge undertaking. We um, most recently updated the Hinchyville Historic District. So the intent is to supplement that information as part of our resource inventory to be more reflective of the current conditions. The um, current nomination that was approved was written in the 70s, and so it is pretty scant. There was a, a rush when that um, federal law was, was put in place to put as many things in the National Register as possible. So the documentation um, is very limited on some of them, especially for some of the uh, individual homes. But with the districts, it's really important to the city of Franklin to keep that up to date so that we are aware of all the resources that we have. And one of the, the great opportunities that we're extended by doing this is to get more information on our um, historic accessory structures, which aren't documented at all as part of some of those 70s nominations. So we're really excited to move forward with that. I'll keep you up to date as, as we work toward it. And as I said, we are continuing to work on a historic district design guidelines update. I hope everyone saw the public survey that went out and saw that information. We received almost 600 responses to that. So I'm in the process of going through and vetting all this um, so I can give you all information about um, the priorities of our community and we can um, reflect that in an, an overview to you all at the uh, August DRC meeting. Okay. Um, number one, I'm so excited, Amanda, that you jumped on getting the grant for mm -hmm. redoing the Lewisburg Avenue. It is incredibly important. There's been so many philosophical changes that uh, the old nominations are not inclusive at all into how we look at things now. And you mean that in general, right? Not just for that not district, just for of us, course. In general. Mm -hmm. And then what survey went out? So we, um, we sent, we created a survey for the public for the historic district design guidelines. Mm -hmm. So that was um, advertised pretty extensively through the city of Franklin's social media accounts. Mm -hmm. And we also put up signs in the neighborhood. Uh, I know I need to go out and pick some yeah. of those up this week. <laughs> but uh, we did receive over, over 550 responses. I think it was close to 575 responses on that, mm -hmm. which is really, really helpful Huge. for us. That's good. That's yes. tremendous. Yeah. I, I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I'm yeah, surprised. and the questions, I, I know um, some of you probably, um, you know, completed that yourselves, but the questions were related to determining if compatibility is important to a, a citizen or a visitor, and if so, what is compatibility? So, mm -hmm. um, I'll be really excited to analyze those results and share that with you. Thanks. That's good. Congratulations. Yeah. Anything else? Other than a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Nick. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Kathy. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.